Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Tony Dudzik, Pick Guardian. Jared Brandon, Brandon Wong, Pickups. Hey, it's me, Todd Novak. We are super happy you are with us right now listening to our little podcast, the little big podcast. That's right. The the podcast that could. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all the all the <laughs> diminutive terms for this thing. That's right. uh, no, for for reals, for <laughs> legits. Um, we love doing this. We're we're super happy that you're with us. So we're going to talk about guitars and guitar stuff today, which is our favorite thing to talk about. To the to the woe of many, I think. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of nonsense too. Right? Yeah, probably some or n- or some nonsense depending on which shirt you have. Um, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it is true. Um, so we're nearing up on Christmas. We got a couple things we oh, want to oh, oh. bring up. There he is. Yes, there is Santa Claus himself. <laughs> uh, one of the first things I want to mention is so we got these amazing barefoot buttons from Barefoot Buttons. And Tony's got them right here. <laughs> and they have our uh, logo. Guitar knobs on them, and it looks wicked cool. Whoa! They do. These are like and anodized, cool color aluminum. In them. Exactly, aluminum. Yes, as they say and they the are. UK. We have some for uh, for analog pedals as well as the uh, soft touch digital. Ooh, very yeah. cool, man. With Allen keys too. They are different. In the in case you are ordering them yourself, make sure you select the right one because they are a different diameter on the inside. Right. Uh, hole. So what I'm going to do is on Christmas Day, I'm going to pull six names. I think you should do it at midnight. I don't know if I can do it at midnight. Around Christmas (laughs) time-ish, Christmas Day. I'm going to make it the 25th because there's, you know, you open all your presents and you're like, oh, well, I guess I opened all my presents. If I only had one more. (laughs) I'm going to pull six names out of a stocking and award those on Instagram somehow. Or and might how win. are those people going to be able they to get go their to, name in the stocking? They got to go to Instagram, and they will. All you need to do, I'm going to put up a post for this. It should be up by the time you hear this. Uh, we're going to put up a post, and you just need to tag a friend. That's all you got to do. Just just tag a friend in the comments, and make sure you like our page and Barefoot Buttons page. Yep. You'll win a major reward. You, I'm not going to make you repost. I'm not going to do all that stuff. You just got to like both of ours and tag a friend. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's it. That sounds very easy. I just, I want, I want to get these awesome little products in the people's hands, but I also want to get some more people looking at our stuff. Not our, you know, <laughs> at, at, the, at the Instagram. <laughs> the Instagram. That's, a, that's a different uh, podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a few other things happening uh, before we get into the guitar business. Tony, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been told to keep this brief. Yes. Several times. Mm-hmm. And very seldom do I. <laughs> but I understand there is a way that people out there who are listening and want to participate in some way and yes, want sir. to help support a program, a podcast, if you will. Yes. Yeah, such will. as the Guitar Knobs. Yes. Uh, they can actually go on and become a patron. Where can they go? I think it's patreon.com mm-hmm. forward slash the guitar knobs. That's it. And there are some wonderful Thank you, Tony. incentives. <laughs> hey man. That you can do. <laughs> Hold on, nah, you wait. You wait. Don't don't you interrupt me. Check it out. Check it out. Yep. See what you want. You've heard the spiel. Give what you can, can what you give. Right. If you give enough at the end of each episode. You get to put your name on the thing. Yeah. That's a registered trademark That's, of Jared Brand. Yes, something like that. So, yeah, indeed. Uh, and we got a couple of new ones that we're going to read off at the end of the program. Which Thank you very, so much. Very, very happy. I mean, about. it lets us know that people are out there. They appreciate what we do. We yeah. really honestly do appreciate and, it. And we really honestly do use it and need it for the benefit of this show and for nothing else. This is not lining our pockets in any way, shape, or form. No legal blah, blah. Uh, Member FDIC. How, yeah, however any, somebody wants to do that. Uh, well, I also want to mention that we've got this really cool 
headphones on our on our ears from Grado Headphones. Thank these you, are Grado. Awesome. These, awesome. Are, these are fantastic. Check out GradoLabs.com to check out your own. I actually got a couple emails asking about them. Oh, cool. They're yeah. the Prestige series. They are. Hey, I want to point you to the Potent Pairings video on Reverb.com featuring Troy Van Loon of Queens of the Stone Age, one of my personal favorites. I uh, love that band and love the, the style of tones that he's getting. This particular video runs through about 12 unique pedals that they use in combination to uh, showcase some of his songs and uh, how he puts them together. And so he actually basically just watches. And he critiques. He critiques it. And it's pretty, pretty interesting. I think we have all wanted to emulate specific uh, songs or artists. And this uh, idea is, is uh, pretty cool. Actually, I went to try to go get one or two of those pedals. I'm just saying. Go to Reverb.com forward slash videos and you can find it there. I think there's also some available on YouTube.com as well. Yes. Under very the cool. uh, under the Reverb channel. And hey, Troy, give us a call. Uh, yeah, yeah, give us a call. <laughs> uh, I was so inspired by said video that that's what we're doing our uh, episode on. Isn't that right, boys? That's right. Yes, potent pairings. Yes. Yep. Yeah, we're taking a little bit of a different spin on it, but I think the the general idea is there. Are you, from, right. are you from Canada, eh? An idea. But first, everyone, let's get on with what happened in our music worlds this week, our guitar worlds specifically. Oh, yeah. Jared, you sound hyped up on this, do I? I am. <clears throat> so I have an Electra, uh, electric guitar. It is a black Les Paul copy. And I uh, love the way it feels, love the way it plays. And uh, as of now... I love the way it sounds because uh, what I had done to it was uh, I had all the electronics taken out and I did a complete overhaul on uh, the wire, wiring harness. I, I took some, uh, oh, some really good... Uh, duct tape? Yes, I used <laughs> duct tape. No, I didn't use duct tape, man. You're confusing me. <laughs> yeah. I got some really good uh, potentiometers, other known as uh, POTS. And um, uh, they were a pretty good brand, and and uh, I did a '50s style uh, what, wiring what, what, harness. What kind did you use? Just out of curiosity, I can't think of the brand name. CTS, off the top. yes, CTS, 500K. You know, I, I uh, and the reason I bring this up is I've I've tried a couple of some of the Emerson pots, and uh, it's another brand. They're they're basically CTS pots, but they're to Emerson specs. You can buy. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they're can, they're basically a tighter. Um, uh, they're a better quality. Yes, higher quality. Yeah, they're they're to Emerson specs. They Emerson also makes wiring harnesses. They make yeah. uh, special caps, different That's things like that. There's a there's a place where I know you can buy the really good CTS pots like that. Yes, and uh, so anyway, I. Uh, these are not the super high quality CTS pots, but they're fair. They're well, good. they're certainly a step up from the alphas. Okay, so they were alphas. Oh, hold on, real quick. Why would someone want to get higher quality pots? So if I'm if I'm look, I'm just posing this question. If I'm uh, looking on like Stu Mac or Amazon or whatever, and I want to venture into rebuilding my wiring kit, why do pots matter, guys? Durability. And they're specked out closer to what they're supposed to be. Okay, what does that mean? In Tighter context? tolerances. So in other words, okay. like uh, I think the average pot is plus or minus 10% of yeah. the actual value. Whereas some of these tighter ones are probably closer to 5%. So yes. when we say tighter, what does that mean? Closer to the advertised or the uh the actual uh value of the potential okay so if it says 500k it's going to be closer it's to going to be closer to 500k yeah. as it's not going to be 470 it's going to yeah it's going to be 475 to 525 instead of 450 to 550 yeah uh -huh. Those are big I know numbers. this isn't the, the potentiometer podcast, but this is one of those things that um, I, I think could be the podcast. Well, I think oh, you brought up a man. very valid, valid question, and uh, it's good you brought that up. Well, and the the other thing, you know, a lot of uh, less expensive guitars have what are called mini pots in. Oh yeah, they're small, and they're smaller. 
I've always had an issue with those because of the, I don't know, a full, what I call a full size pot seems to have a better sweep. In other words, when you go from zero to 10, um, there seems to be, uh, it's a wider sweep. Yeah. There's more there. Yeah. Because the same concept of it's a wider, faster sweep and it's the same concept of a, a, an analog tape. The faster it goes, you know, the better audio that's going to come out. But the slower it goes, it's just going to sound like crap. <laughs> Interesting. Well, that's one way to put it. <laughs> that might be a little far-fetched, but they're going to come on. No, I mean, Throw me a bone. It, it, when you think about a, how, a, how a potentiometer works, it's a variable resistor. Yeah. So basically, the, when I call sweep is, you know, going from the minimum value to the maximum value. Right. And with a larger size, all the guts that are inside that, there seems to be, I don't know, what do you would call it? More meat, whatever. It's, yeah. It, there, there just seems to, to always be. Every time I've replaced a, a mini pot with a full-size pot, it always seems to react better, sound better. Mm-hmm. There's more, yeah, it seems like you have more room in your volume you know you have a a wider it seems to me that when when we're you can pick up a guitar or even an amp actually when i got my dave harris amp and i went to this is a difference and no knock on on vox or anything like that but i I, when i had my vox i could i would turn the the, you know turn the knob and the pot would just go whip 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 where it would just whip real quick right yeah and that always made me like I, I didn't like that because I was like, man, if I just bump this thing, these pot, these yeah, knobs especially if you were out on a concert or and, and right, that, and that's and that I think that the, I the, the, the tighter tolerances exactly. mean from zero to ten, yeah, is actually a little more well. I, I don't know if accurate. this is it, it comes into the actual quality of these things, but when I got my next amp head. I went to go twist the knobs and it and it was like a heavy turn, like it was a resisting turn. It, it, yeah, you know I, what mean, I mean, it, it, was, it, it, it didn't. I just know exactly flip. what it you're feeling. Went, like, yeah. uh, it's and I was like, oh, 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 look at that. That's that's how it's supposed to feel. It like. felt like an, I, it, you know, it felt like it felt hydraulic almost. Exactly. Like. Yeah, felt nice and tight and and that's quality, people. Yeah. Anyways, just curious. I know that others are too. So so mine are. I went from you know really bad potentiometers to middle of the road pretty good you know not the best but just average good Uh, i'm not gonna worry about them anymore and uh, i also replaced the pickups uh i put a set of brandon wound pickups in them who makes those brandon wound pickups oh (laughs) that would be me (laughs) and uh it the guitar sounds way different it sounds more clear. Um, it sounds fatter, and uh, it's it's a big improvement. And that's everything combined. I'm not saying the pickups made it super good and only. It's it's everything. It's the whole wiring harness package total. Uh, that that is correct. <laughs> I don't even know what you said to be honest. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I did, and I'm very happy I did that. That's oh, cool. And one more thing. I also found out that the the cap on that Les Paul copy is plywood. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. And I, 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 I don't care because it sounds so good. Well, I think a lot of those uh, Ibanez, Arias, a lot of from the that, from that late 70s. 60s, early 70s era, yeah. they actually took, instead of having a carved piece of maple, they actually molded a piece of, a piece of plywood. Yeah. And so you, you'll find a lot of those, and they look really cool, but if you ever pull the pickups or whatever, it's this big hollow I mean, it's spot. like, it's the cheapest, one of the cheapest guitars I have, but I would totally feel comfortable taking it out and playing a live gig in front of 500 you know, to a thousand people. It's a great guitar. What about 1100? Yep. Wow. But I don't think I'll ever get that opportunity. <laughs> but, uh, so that's what I did, man. I, uh, improved one of my cheapy guitars and I cool. love it. I nice. plug it in all the time now. Good deal. Yeah. Excellent. Tony. Well, this, this past weekend and this week, we're, uh, this, uh, we have a reunion show up in Youngstown, Ohio. 
uh, at a club called Cedars, which is back back in my day, back in the eighties. Cedar is it C E D A R S? Yes, Cedar. Cedar like the tree. Okay. Um, but there there was a club in Youngstown downtown that that we played. It was kind of the alternative punk uh, club. And so uh, every year, a bunch of us around Christmas time or sometimes around Thanksgiving get together and we, we just, you know, some of us have played in bands together, some of us have not, but uh, we're doing some, some really fun things this year. Uh, there's some really, you know, from various eras of Cedars uh, are actually playing that night. And, uh, and Todd, you'll be glad to know that we're going to do Los Angeles by X. Nice. One of my favorites. Great, yeah. great song. That band. And uh, we've got a bunch of other songs that we're going to do. Zoom to kill me back, but yes. that's okay. Where is Billy Zoom? He may have missed his call. Chilling yes. out in a recliner. Yeah. He's earned it. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, so yeah, that was, uh, so I went up to Youngstown. We're in Columbus. Youngstown's two and a half hours mm-hmm. away. And uh, uh, got to to jam with some old friends. That's great. Uh, Relearn and then learn some new songs. Uh, And just had a quick practice. And then, you know, of course, a couple of the guys, we got some drummer coming in from New York and a a bass player coming in from D.C. So we haven't we haven't practiced with them yet. (laughs) Oh, that's, so it's that's it's, one, it's one of those, it's uh, one of those. Yeah, one of those five minutes before the show. Oh, uh, quick! This is what we're through. playing. Okay, go, yeah. go. Nice. So that, I mean, that's what Jimmy Page did with Aerosmith before uh, the Hall of Fame gig that they did for the. I think you know, that's, hard that's rock what most of those dudes do. They just get up there. And I go, think so. Oh, like the, you know, Jimmy Page says we're playing this, and they're like, okay, we're gonna do it, and then they play it, and it's awesome. Yeah. So hopefully that's how it sounds at your gig. Um, you know, surprisingly, and I and not to brag or anything, but it always comes together. I mean, it <laughs> it, it, it usually sounds like you know doo doo, mm-hmm. you know, the week or two before. Yeah. And it you know we we got it pretty good. Is this um, after a few beers or? Uh, usually it involves. <laughs> Either that or some some fine mm. bourbon, which is the nectar of the throat gods. All right, right. Okay, okay. <laughs> nectar of the throat gods. There it is. I spent uh, a couple days this week working on my friend's two guitars that he bought uh, on Black Friday. What? From a brand called Epiphone. He got the the uh, the Les Pauls the 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 two of the ninety nine dollar Les Pauls. Oh. And he was just super, super jazzed about him. He got the blue one and the yellow one. And everybody saw these, you know, kind of come out. There was a bunch of ruckus, I think, around a couple shows previously where they were going to release them and all of the chatter on the Internet about oh, $100 guitars and rah, rah, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> what was that again? Rubble, rubble. There's a, you know, hey, they're cool little punk sticks, like for sure, right? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, the, you know, but when you're paying $100 for guitar, there are yeah. a couple things that you're going to get $100 worth. Now, that said, the idea that you have a nicely painted guitar that works, that is, you know, pretty, pretty cool looking for 99 bucks, uh, is still a pretty good deal, right? What's, no. I think what's really cool about those guitars is you can actually take them. Yep. And if you want to upgrade pickups and you tuning can, machines and you electronics. You should upgrade them. That's, that's, yeah. that's the lesson here. Uh, what I did was I spent some time on the frets just kind of finishing up a little bit because they were rather edgy if you know what i'm saying yeah on the side you need some yeah it feels like you're (laughs) after playing that yeah it feels like you're rubbing your fingers across a cheese grater yep so Uh, i just took some i love that feeling that's a great feeling uh, (laughs) dialed those in uh gave the uh uh it it had an awful lot of plastic uh like the saran wrap plastic on it and the thing is what you know, it, we've all seen these at secondhand stores or, you know, Music Go Round or Craigslist or something. And you get a guitar and you're like, you took the plastic off the pick guard, but you didn't take the screws out. 
Uh, so all the little tufts of plastic. Yes. There's, there's a it's around of, the screws there's and a the ton knobs. Of screws on these things. There's a lot of screws. Yep. And so I had to undo the pickups. I had to do the, you know, undo anything that had plastic on it, take it all apart, and then pull it all off. I spent time doing that and then had to, you know, adjust the pickup height and... The, one of the things that I was not thrilled about that, although I guess it could lend itself to this particular sound of these, is that these have a particularly high action, and there's not a lot you can do about it because mm -hmm. the neck angle to the actual bridge and the actual height of the pickups are dictate that the pickups are a little farther away from the strings that I, than I would like because... I couldn't lower the bridge down without getting there's high there's high spots on the frets. The frets aren't like totally dialed in. What, so what kind of pickups are in? Or is it like a P90? These are just single little single coils. But and you can't get them high. You can't raise them I higher. They they're pushed all the way to the tippy top. Uh, but I couldn't lower the action anymore where I would like it because there's too many high spots on the frets, mm. and I didn't want to you know frankly invest the time on like well let me get all the you know it's like spend six hours on frets on a hundred dollar guitar it doesn't you know i don't want to do that so i'm like well he's gonna have higher action than i'd like <laughs> but you know it's yeah, good I mean, it's training not, it makes your fingers stronger it's yeah it's i mean it's not a deal breaker or anything you know and, he, and he's not you know doing you know arpeggios and stuff on it and he's just playing some punk rhythms on him cool that's fine so did that to both of those, put some SIT strings on it, um, call us. And uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's kind of fun. What gauge did you put on those, just out of curiosity? Super light, extra light, ultra Super light. Super light? There's, there's another problem. Yeah, if, well, well, but if yeah. you have high action, though, and if you have, you know, really, you know, high tension strings, that's going to pull that neck even more. Yeah, but you should be able to drop the bridge then. No, because it wasn't the geometry is the geometry. Funky. Well, it's the geometry and it's the high frets. Because I had like I had it to where I would like it, right? I thought, okay, perfect. This is going to be great. It's not too far away from the pickups, and then you know, like you know, dun 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 dun, and I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> you know, inevitably I always hit a, a, a fret that was out of balance too yeah. high. So, so they need leveled. They do. Yeah. yeah, but you're not, I mean, it's a $100 guitar, you're not going to get that. So the $100 guitar plucked. needs a $100. <laughs> you can spend $300 to have it plucked. Yeah. Right, right. Well, a $100 guitar, $100 guitar needs a $100 setup. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, that was my that was my week. Cool. But, uh, you took you a whole week to do that. Yeah, <laughs> not only did you have one, but you had two of these to set up. Yes, I had two of them to set up. So oh. after the first one, I was like... Uh, so which, which <laughs> color did you like better? Well, the hilarious thing is one says vintage and one says SP, and they're both identical. <laughs> so I'm, I really don't know what I don't know what the what the difference is. But look, hey, if this is your first guitar and you got if that's all you got, man, this is a good little deal. Well, yeah, I mean it's I mean there there are plenty of really good starter instruments out yeah. there. Yeah. I, I've always been a fan of of usually used instruments yeah yeah i mean you can find some really great deals out there you know yeah. what they used in the 50s like les paul juniors which go for like four to five grand now yeah those crazy. Are student guitars but anyways <laughs> we digress hey let's get into the the mix shall we let's gentlemen do it, man. all right let's do so, this wah, potent wah, pairings wah, wah, potent wah, wah, pairings wah, wah. let's do it <laughs> penelope played her potent pairings on the peninsula with her plectrum pressing her plimsoll pedal <laughs> Do you know what a plimsoll is, by the way? Uh, yeah, it was a shoe. Tennis shoes. Yeah. That was British slang for tennis shoes. Yeah. Okay, that's totally useless information. Thanks a lot, Tony. Hey, you um, never know. It might come up in a <laughs> trivia contest. <laughs> okay, here we go, guys. This is what yeah. we're doing. Our assignment for potent pairings was to give each of us a, uh, a choice of, of what we're calling an A and a B rig. Not necessarily... It's just two rigs. We get... Two choices, two rigs. Uh, each a rig, pair of a rigs. A pair of rigs. A potent pair. It's a potent <laughs> pair. With each rig, we get a guitar, an amp, and a pedal. Sweet. Yes. Potent pairings. Here we go. Who wants to go first? 
Jared says yes. No. 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 I'll go first. Okay, go, Tony. All right. So the way I understand that this works is that um, we want to emulate a particular sound or sounds, in this case, a pair of sounds, a pair of potent sounds Mm -hmm. that we would like to somehow replicate. Ish. Ish. So one of my favorite guitarists is Pete Townsend. Mm -hmm. I kind of equivocate, ooh, that's a big word, with uh, Pete Townsend with Paul Weller sometimes from the jam. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, They've got a very similar... I I mean, Pete has, especially in the early days, was... Yeah, a very Vibrant. great yeah. rhythm guitar player who later became a really great lead player. Yeah. And I think Weller kind of fell into that same kind of thing. Yeah. And, and an interesting part of it is... They were both like the people's guys, too. They were the people's champions. They were the underdogs. Yeah. So my A-rig is going to involve probably... Now, probably my favorite era of Townsend is... The SGs that he used to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the uh, specials. And the Rickenbackers that he played in the very early days through either Selmer or Vox amps. Did he break those? He broke a lot of them. Oh, man. Even the Rickenbackers? Oh, yeah. There's oh, there's some. One of my favorite Pete pictures is he's in the foreground and there's like these broken Rickenbackers behind him. <laughs> it's just, oh, just, you know, oh, if only we could have those back. Mm-hmm. But, um, so I, I, I've always liked that sound, and and really the. But describe that sound for the. It's for the other. Chimey, chimey, but it's it's still meaty, and and I think that really the only way that I've found to get that that kind of sound is out of a Vox or a Vox ish amp, oh, um, yeah. like a Doctor Z or anything okay. else that has you know basically in what the EL eighty four right uh, tubes the output tubes. Um, and there's also a lot of compression that's involved, and sometimes it's within the amp itself. So for Rig A, I'm going to go, uh, even though I dearly love uh, Rickenbackers, I'm going to go with an SG Special. Wow. Through a compressor. Now that's the single... Co- single oh, yeah, the P90. Yeah, 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 P90. yeah, like late 60s. Dog ear P90. Late 60s? Yeah. I have a 64. Why are you talking like that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting higher and higher. <laughs> Help me. Literally. <laughs> so, but but to me, there's the, the whole, the, the I mean, the the quintessential. What color? What color? What color? Oh, well, of course, it's going to be uh, cherry. Uh, cherry red. Yeah. Or, the only you know, color that's, that came? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that, would, that would be it. That was it. Cherry. Oh. Or a nice burgundy. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, the, the P90 equipped SG... But you can make it any color you want. You don't have to have exactly his stuff. No, but I mean, to me, that's All right. that's the quintessential guitar, and um, we'll run that through a uh, a compression pedal of, of uh, a compression pedal of your choice. Well, it's your choice. This is your jam, man. It's my jam. Um, I'm going to go with the Jangle Box. Okay, because I have one. And I love I love that. That it sounds great with a Rickenbacker. Uh, for those who don't know what a jangle box is, it is the circuit that is in the Roger McGuinn uh, Rickenbacker guitar in pedal form. Jared and I just looked at each other. They just looked at each other. <laughs> do you know who Roger McGuinn is? <laughs> I do not know. I'm the uh, big dummy. That's the first time I've ever got... heard McGuinn. Roger McGuinn from The Birds. Oh. Okay. Nope. I mean, no, it hit, no, no, I know uh, the birds. I'm just not I familiar with David Roger Crosby. No. Yeah, um, say the birds. I think tisk, of David Crosby. Tisk, tisk. Yeah, I wasn't really into them. We got some learning to do, boys. I'm just saying, I wasn't. Really so okay, well, anyhow, well, most of that music I really wasn't into. Well, that's all right. Yeah, you know, a, I mean, it's, all the older know. fellows are rolling, rolling their eyes at us right now. You know. Yeah, I think oh, I, uh, uh, I'm rolling like my. Evening, I, I mean, jeez, oh man, how do I get out of this place? Uh, so yeah. So anyhow, the um, uh, McGuinn played uh, Rickenbackers primarily mm-hmm. in the Birds twelve string. Mm-hmm. He's the king of the twelve string Rickenbackers. Yeah. Are you familiar? Totally. Is, it, is it getting? You know, yep. Yes. Yep. This magic. I'm with you. Eight miles high. 
Hey, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so anyhow, yeah, so we had a little yeah, segue. Still don't there. like that stuff. Ah, uh, <laughs> boy, oh boy. All right, rig number. I'm not rig. done with my rig yet. Uh, so anyhow, the jangle box is the compressor compressor that is found in the Roger McGuinn model. Okay, of the Rickenbacker. It's a great compressor. Uh, really brings a Rick to life. And I'm going to go into a Vox AC30. All right. That's, I mean, that's to me the, the, that sound, it, it's perfectly that's, captured. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense to me. Jangly licious. Okay. Jangle licious. Jangle licious. your B rig? Uh, my, my B rig is going to, this is going to freak you Potent out. Potent pairing number two. Potent pairing number two. It's going to be Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols. Hey, now we're talking. Whoa. Uh, you didn't expect that, did you? I didn't. That came out of left field. Um, it, it, the people that you know, there's there's people that I play the first Sex Pistols album to, and they they just can't believe how tight the oh, pistols yeah. were. Yeah. Uh, now live was a different story because they brought Sid Vicious in, but yeah, back when Useless. Glenn Matlock was it was the bass player. I mean, you had drums, bass, and guitar, and just about every cut on Never Mind the Bullocks. Here's the Sex Pistols. Yeah. Uh, it's just super super tight. Right. And they sound great. And that guitar tone is what I cut my teeth on. Yeah. And uh, the guitar that, that Steve Jones played was a, uh, a Les Paul Custom. Uh, it belonged white, to us. Right? It was a white one. It belonged to Sylvain Sylvain from the New York Dolls. But that, that, that sound, that Les Paul Custom sound, or Les Paul for, you know, any, any Les Paul, through a, uh, a Marshall rig, is is still it's just it's the sound that tickles the cockles of my soul i like it you know that now that'll go for mick ronson you know same kind of thing man it's just that it sounds right and that's my b-rig i love it and you know quite honestly i don't even need a pedal with that one that's going straight i'm bypassing the pedal I'm breaking the mold. I'm going Les Paul into Marshall. Well, in that case, wouldn't you use a uh, volume pedal? Why are you breaking the mold? You mean your own mold? No, the whole mold about this guitar pedal amp. Oh, okay. Trifecta. So you're not doing a pedal. Yeah, and then I just you know what? Them. I'll take that back. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a wah in the middle. Okay. And as as Mick Ronson used a volume to volume wah. No, just, no. You just, he would, he, would, he would keep the wah on and keep find the sweet spot on yeah. the wah. Yeah, I like that. There's a lot of pedals out now that'll that'll do that. And I don't mean auto wahs either. People. So there you go. That's 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 rig A, rig B. Excellent. I like it. I'm a huge fan, huge fan of early punk, man. Not bad. I love it. Uh oh, but you know what? A little editorial. The Sid Vicious thing? Yes. I just want to go on. I, I've thought about, you know, chiming up on Instagram, but then you're, you get bombarded by everybody yelling at you and stuff. I, I'm over the way that people glorify him and his, his like, his, this, everything that he brought. Well, I think what Sid brought was the attitude that attitude was there in spades before that. It just went, it took it totally over the top to the point where it was now a joke, almost like a joke band. You know what I mean? Mm. I, that, that, my, my issue with that is just a, like when people refer to the pistols and, and the music that was happening at that time, he's become the poster child for that. Yeah. So yeah. that's just my own. No, that, no, I, 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 just, th I think you, know, you raise a very good point. Um, like and, and, and I'm glorifying the people that actually wrote the music and played the music and and made something happen. That's all. All right. Well, that's good. And that and that's why. I mean, I had I, I never saw the Pistols back in the '70s. I'm not quite that old. But, yeah. Neither am I. But I, I did but get to see them. Learned when, an awful lot about it. And since they then. they had a reunion tour. Yeah. Um. In and I saw them up in Cleveland, and it was really the original lineup. Um. And it, they were just great. Yeah. It was at, I think, at Nautica up there in, in Cleveland. It was an outdoor show. We had a great time. I loved it. Yeah. Well, listen, to everybody, don't beat me up over this. I'm just trying to be honest. It's like, you know, when we glorify things that, that are, uh, you know, maybe miss, 
um, misdirected. I just, that's what I feel like. It's just sort of misdirected fame, you know, mm. a little bit. And I'm just like, yeah, there's some actual people who really contributed a lot to that. And I don't think that. that Go to the Guitar well. Knobs Facebook group and uh, voice your opinion on what Todd's saying. Yeah. Like to yes. Know. Like to know. Pummel him. Don't, he doesn't like stainless steel either. frets either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jared, what do you got? Sorry for um, my editorial, everybody, but it seemed like the time to do it. I enjoyed it. So, uh, I don't think you did. The, the, uh, I did. So uh, Rig A, I'm, I want to hit like a Mick Ralph tone. And if you, for those who don't know who Mil- Mick like Ralph is, I know you guys are like, who are you guys? No, man, Mick Ralph was the original gu- lead guitar player for the band Bad Company. And I like a lot of Bad Company songs, most of them. There's a few that, you know, I don't, but I, I like the sound of, of his guitar more than anything, uh, especially the live stuff that you can hear on YouTube. And I just, I don't know how he gets that flangy sound. I don't know if his amps are out of phase with each other because... You know, they they would connect, you know, two or three stacks together, you know, back in the 70s, early 70s like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I it, just go back and listen to the, uh, you know, some of the live concerts they did and you'll know what I'm talking about. And that that would consist of like a, a 59 style Les Paul. You know, of course, you're not going to get your hands on a real one unless you're rich. But, uh, you know, just... <laughs> uh, he said that with such disdain. Like a rich guy. <laughs> no, man, get yourself a, just a, a normal Gibson Les Paul. Um, use a flanger. Uh, and, and don't turn the flanger up. And just... just you want a, a subtle flanger sound. And, Would you uh, put Brandon Wan pickups in that Les Paul? You can, <laughs> if you'd like. And probably a pick guardian pick guard. Uh, yeah, right, there's your ads, and then <laughs> and then go listen to the guitar knobs afterwards. Yeah. Anyway, uh, get a Marshall stack or even a half stack, but but uh, that would be my rig A, and it's actually that is a pretty common amp or uh, I'm sorry, guitar amp combo that a lot of people use. What yeah. what Marshall day in would, day what, out. what Marshall would you go with? Uh, get a Plexi, just get an old style, something really old from the seventies. Okay. I mean, not just even the, get a yeah, just get a fifty watt uh, plexi. Okay, you know, don't get the hundred watt; you blow your ears away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, seriously. But uh, do you have a particular pedal that you're going? With? I know you said flanger, but yeah, the midnight. The midnight. Yeah, by our buddy Mike, man. Okay. Yeah, that'll Red, work. Red House Electronics. Yeah, that'll do it. That's a brand new pedal. That thing's awesome. Yeah, I I bought that pedal to get that sound. Nice. And uh, I've achieved it, and it's a fantastic pedal, uh, fantastic sound. Uh, it's just one of my He's guilty get pleasures, you a shirt man. That says fantastic on it. Right. Uh, it's a sound like uh, Mick Ralph. <laughs> it's a it's a guilty pleasure. Yeah. Who in the heck out there is going to hear that said Mick Ralph? Mick Ralph. It's, it's just a, his name, it's man. It's the most unrock and roll name I've ever heard. Says something you get at McDonald's. You know what? <laughs> I actually saw. <laughs> I'll take a Mick Ralph with cheese. <laughs> uh, it sounds sure like something you would do after that. you eat McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. So, anyway. what's, your, what's your B rig there, buddy? No, man. Uh, uh, still on the A. A little fun <laughs> fact about Mick Ralph is and about Ralphie. <laughs> Is that he doesn't like airplane rides, so he'll only tour with the original Bad Company band if they're around where he lives. He won't fly anywhere else. Will he take a bus? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Even though flying is safer than driving. Anyway, statistically, uh, that is. Well, yeah. So, uh, Rig B would be it's something I already have, and inspired by Jimmy Page's acoustic rig okay. that he used in the 70s, you know, when he did the acoustic set. And what I use is um, I have a cop stringed instrument guitar. That's the brand. It was custom made, and I had a piezo. By Denny Cop. By Denny Cop. yep. He's out of uh, uh, Port Clinton area. And uh, 
he put a piezo in the bridge, and, and it just sounds so clean, it's so fantastic. I said it again. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> it's okay. Anyway, it sounds really great. Now Good. I sound like Jimmy Fallon. And, uh, so, and I, I run that through an acoustic, uh, sonic, a Fender acoustic sonic. Oh, nice. nice. It's yeah. really cool. If, if you look at the speaker structure, it, they're all smaller speakers. When you look at the grill, it's a big, large grill and it looks like, oh, it's got two twelve. It's big and large. It's got a 15. Is that the one with the, like the side fire? Yeah. Ring? Yeah. Those are cool. It, it throws the sound around the room and, uh, it's. It's got a bunch of effects on it and all that kind of thing. But uh, one of my favorite pedals is a Holy Grail reverb pedal. And, yeah. and I've mentioned that in plenty of other podcasts. But you can't go You're wrong with that You're doing other pedal. people's podcasts? <laughs> What's up with that? No way, man. We had a contract. No way, man. I promise. <laughs> this podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, that's rig B. Um, so it's a, he's got an electric rig? And an yeah, acoustic, an electric right? and acoustic. And the, Dancing days are indeed here again. Yes, the, they the are. The cool thing about the the Denny Cop guitar is that I could actually switch it to electric guitar. Yeah, but you wouldn't want to do that through through the. You let uh, me borrow that sonic. really, really early on when we were just getting to know each other, and you're like, "Here's my like multi, multi, multi thousand dollar guitar. Why don't you hang out with it?" <laughs> is that, I was is that like, the, "Man, I don't want to do this." That one? I don't know. I got to bring it by. It's actually a one of the coolest best guitars i have huh is it is it like a true acoustic or is it no, a it's a hollow it's a hollow body it is a hollow okay. body but it's you know probably solid through the bridge okay but it's a, sem- okay. oh, a semi hollow it is i think a, i think i have a seen that. very yeah. expensive very nicely handmade piece of wood it's yeah it's artwork man yeah it is i yeah. didn't I, I picked it up i'm like yep Man, put it back down because <laughs> i just want them the cool <laughs> thing about those are it. also is you could actually knock it over on a stand and it'll fall to the floor the neck will not break and it will not go out of tune i want to try I dare that. you to try that i'm yeah. gonna try that i already did on that guitar i just described actually yeah. my little brother did mm. and he's like huh he knocked it over accidentally so he's like huh i was like don't worry about it joe don't worry about it because it's probably still in tune it is it is a very solid and I, I will vouch for that yeah I, like cause when you look at it it doesn't it looks i don't want to say dainty but it looks fragile 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 it does but, it's for me but it's but not. it's not huh. yeah all right gentlemen <clears throat> how about you todd i'm gonna, I'm gonna let's let's have your rig waiting rig for this i'm gonna school you guys right now here it is <laughs> with my encyclopedic knowledge of this paper in front of me <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, two of my favorites. I know I go on and on about fuzz pedals and stuff like that, and I and I love I love that big heavy sound. Um, f- not necessarily all the time, but I do. That is one of the things that I, I I do really like. But at the heart of my guitar brain lies punk, early punk, and so I need a punk rig. And I'm thinking that it's probably somewhere between Mick Jones and Johnny Thunders. Mm. So I'm going with, I want to, I, I can choose any color I want. So I want a white Les Paul special double cutaway. Okay. Uh, with a single P90. You know, they didn't make them in white. I know. That's why I said I could have any color I want. Okay. So I could make that now. I would make that happen for you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Tony. <laughs> I'm a purist. Yeah. I can't help it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I, would have it, I would have it distressed. I was actually probably... Um, I, Age I, gold hardware? Uh, no. No, they never uh, came with gold no. hardware. No. Mm. Anyways. Um, <laughs> studios right. did, though. Thanks for playing. Yes, they... No. Not yes. studios. No. 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 Guarantee. No. My, I used to have one. How much? Yeah. How much you want to bet? Anyways, this is my thing now. Oh. Uh, I would also require a vintage rat pedal. I play a, a rat right now, but it's not a vintage one, so I'd want a vintage one because why not? Yeah, it's sad that you call a rat pedal vintage. Well, you know, the bigger box Proco, uh, you know. 
I know. I mean, it's it's just, you know, I, I hear vintage uh-huh. related to the word rat. It makes me feel much older. A not new one. An original run rat. Ugh. Anyways, I'm going to play that through a well-stained Fender Twin. Ah. Mm, yes. Are you man enough to handle a Fender Twin? I am. <laughs> I can't say that with a straight face. <laughs> Uh, it's terrible that I can't do that. Uh, yeah, but to me, that sounds like a big, bad mess of a rock and roll. That's, you know, and then like that, 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 like that was a, a Johnny blow. Thunder's rig. Yeah. I mean, I don't think he used a rat pedal, but he yeah, probably Yeah, and I mean, the, the, so, okay, so, so we're, people are like, well, where's Mick Jones fit in that? Well, he, he played a double cutaway for quite some time. Yeah. Uh, he ran his through Marshall. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but twins were, were, uh, commonly, oh, yeah. I mean, that, I mean, they were just loud. Yeah. Joe They're loud, 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 loud guitar. Yeah, my dad had one of those. He, he said they blow your eardrums away. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that's what I intend to do with this rig. <laughs> hurt you. No, it's a reissue. Jared is showing Tony. It's not a reissue. It's it's a normal, everyday it's Gibson true. studio with gold hardware. Yeah, they, we're not talking do. about that at all. You have done hijacked my thing. I'm sorry, just edited You it. pulled up a Les, pa- a, a Les, Les Paul, Paul studio, studio with gold, gold hardware, hardware, which has zero to do with my punk rock rig. T- you? You'll edit over it. Dirty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Potent pairing number two. I also love, I hate, okay, I hate the word because it goes against, half of it goes against everything that I like in music. Which Depeche is mode. Pop. <laughs> but if you want to lump it all together, Brit pop. Brit pop. I love, I love early, you know, give me the, give me the Stone Roses, give me the Charlottes, give me Oasis. I want it all. I love that stuff. Well, see, I wouldn't call that early Brit pop. Well, you wouldn't because you're 92. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like <laughs> no, I mean, but that, that's you're talking mid 90s classic Brit pop. That's you're that's, talking mid 90s. I'm talking late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, you're talking yeah. 90s Brit pop. Yeah, yep. I remember when we had Anyways, Brit pop back in the 1970s. Yes, yes. I'm not talking 1964. So, anyways, uh, for that, I require a. <laughs> I, I require. You require. It. I require it. I want a Gibson ES345. Oh, nice. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes, Tony. I'm having it. Mm. I'm having it. You I'm said ES345. Yeah. But 345. not 55. No. 45 still has the Veritone. I yes, hate that I want the Veritone. Hate Because I just like the chicken head knob on it. What about the, the fretboard? Does it, does it have the square inlay and, and no, the more fancier binding? The, uh, it's got the split, uh, split trapezoid. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Do that again. Those are cool. Oh. I, yeah. man, Those I are know on my duff, cool. man. I know. Yeah. And I think I want it in white, actually, to match my other white Les Paul. Gold hardware? All right. No, not gold hardware. <laughs> you, can, you can play that at church then, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the Church of Rock. <laughs> It'll look innocent. Uh, I That will be going through an Electro Harmonics Memory Man to mm-hmm. give me the big stadium sound. Yep. Into a, mar- a, 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 not a Marshall, a high watt 100. Whoa. Whoa. Hey now. Whoa. Going big time, man. Hey now. Wow. That was copyright. The, 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 what I just did, I can't actually. Hey now. Can I say that? Well, you that can't really sued. say that because I, uh, I think there's a, yeah. a guy on. There's a guy. Some uh, unknown guy on uh, New York radio TV station. show. Anyways, what? those are my two rigs, which I'm, I would. I was very excited about writing this down. I was like, ooh, yeah, I like this. I do like the high... Well, you've, you've got two very powerful amplifiers there. Yeah. And, but, and, and, loud. and they have singular sounds. Like, that. Each of, those, each of those rigs have their own thing going on, man. You know what I mean? I know what you mean, man. <laughs> All right. That was fun. That was I awesome. I like doing that. That was good. Yeah. Those are potent pairings. Those indeed. are potent pairings. Mick indeed, Ralph. Yeah. A pair of potent a pairings. A pair of potent pairings. Okay, we're going to stop saying that word. That's two words. Anyways, we're gone off the rails. It's a little bit late here, you guys, so hopefully you, you don't think we're absolute idiots. Maybe that gives us some street cred. I'm not really sure if we are, but <laughs> uh, we are going to 
end it right. No, no, just kidding. Yeah, man. Jared. You, we got to do our... Uh, do your thing, buddy. Would you rather... Yes, we would. And it's just about Christmas. That's it. So let's just say you saw Mommy kissing Santa Claus. Nice. Okay. Underneath the mistletoe last night. Yes. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, we know the song. You're giving us a nod like, <laughs> are you, you guys going to know this song? Say well, they probably didn't hear you creep yeah. down the stairs to have a yeah. peek. Oh, okay. come on. They come thought on. that you were All tucked right. away Get in your bedroom Get fast asleep. Get to it. So let's just say Santa, the we, jolly Saint Nick. Yes. He's got a big sack on his back, <laughs> and there's two guitars in it. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> he's got the sack of toys on his back. Yeah. A sack of guitars. Right. Now you've got two choices. What what would those be? Would you rather have the Fender Starcaster, mm-hmm. which I believe has the wide range pickups? Yes, and it's offset. It is offset, it's meaning it's slight, slightish. It's slight slight offset. Yeah, it's, just, it's semi-hollow too. Right? Yes, yes, yeah. And uh, it's it's a nice large guitar and a big sound, or. Would you rather have the Coronado, mm. the Fender Coronado? With single coil pickups. Single coil pickups, not such a big, fat, boomy sound, but yet... Um, more Rickenbacker-ish, if you will. Yeah, more Rickenbacker-ish. It's odd. These two are so... They often get confused, and they're very similar. It's kind of strange that they... Well, and maybe not so strange, because you could look at a lot of the models and you'd be like, that's just a... A little bit different. I want to say the Coronado was more of like an ES-335. It's closer to it. It's definitely closer to it, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what you would say the Starcaster was trying to achieve. It's like a a 335 and a a very large uh, jazz master got married. I can see that. With Mm, a boomy, with high output pickups, yeah. (laughs) But... (laughs) The, more, the one that I It might described. be illegal. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. So Santa Claus has two of those, right? Well, he's got one of each in his sack, and yeah. you got to choose which one you get because that's all red? he's got left. What man. colors are they? One is red, and one is white. Did the did this uh, Starcaster actually only come in natural? No, no, no. Is that no. the Coronado only? No, no, no. no? They can't, they, I was hoping you would say Antigua. Yeah, no, I know. I love the antique. I went with white and red because the color of a candy cane. I don't think I've ever seen a color blue. I've only seen natural in the Coronado. No, no, no. They've, they've, they. There were uh, sunburst ones. Uh, There were natural. There were, there were the Antiguas. Which, uh, are you kidding me? Now, okay. And the oh, don't forget the Wildwoods. There are oh, the Wildwoods. What there are, are a couple about? boutique guys making reissues of the Antigua look that actually look pretty good. Yeah. Really? Yes. Well, you know the, the story behind the Antiguas. That's an Antigua podca- co- podcast. Let's no, just let me go okay, on for right. God's sake. Go through the rabbit hole for a while. All yeah. right. Let's go down the rabbit hole. So apparently, as, as I understand it, now the Antigua finish is kind of a whitish... It's creamy it's, finish that has a, a kind of a khaki green puke around border. the outside yeah, border. Like border. Green, green. Yeah. So from what I've read and, and I've been told is... Not only on the guitar itself, but on all of the parts. Of oh, the yeah, guitar. on the pick guard and everything. Yeah. yeah and the so really. apparently the, the Fender had some issues with um, when they routed the binding channels, they actually burned the wood. So they had to come up with a way to disguise the burn marks. No kidding. And that's how they came up with the Antigua finish. It's but they also, the solid. Coronados also came in wildwood, which they injected uh, birch trees while they were growing with dye. And there, there are some crazy, crazy colorations uh, that they used on the, uh, on the wildwood series. Mm. Check it out. Fender's favorite mistake. Nah. Uh, they, well, you know, <laughs> they... Antigua? Nah. I like it. I, you know, there's something about that Antigua finish. Don't sign me I, up for Antigua, man. Hmm. Anyway, one is red. <laughs> so, and, thus we digress. <laughs> right. One is red and one is white. Nah. That, which is which? Yeah. I'm, well, 
Starcaster is red. Okay, Starcaster, red Starcaster. Yep. Coronado is white. I okay. think that's appropriate. Okay. That's a good call. Yeah. All right. Tell me. I'm going to go... Hmm. You know, I, I think I'm going to go with the Starcaster. Really? I think so. I, I just... There's something about that body shape. I like the bridge that's on it. The, uh, the um, uh, Coronados had kind of a... Well, they, they would have had a, uh, a tailpiece... Uh, trapeze tailpiece and a, and a bridge, whereas the the Coronados had basically like a like a hardtail bridge, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. And then I, the wide range humbuckers, the, I think they're cooler pickups. Anyhow, oh yeah, uh, especially so. the original ones were the higher output, and uh, they're very rare with now. the with the copper ferrite magnets. That's right. They don't make those anymore because the magnet companies just will not do it. No matter how many millions of dollars you threw in, in front of their face, they're not going to make those anymore. So yeah, I mean, so I think I, th there's you know they're they're both kind of the forgotten fenders, yeah, uh, especially yeah. in the hollow body category. But I, I've always there's something about Starcasters that I've really liked, always really. Liked. I've never owned one, Jared. Ooh, that's not an easy one. I'm going to fall back to the Starcaster too, man. Just because of really? the light. Mostly because of the wide range. Well, the offset, I don't really have many offset guitars. And I'm breathing. And I do <laughs> like the uh, wide range pickups. Yeah. Um, that too. So those two things, the color red, the offset, wide range pickups, those three those three things have me wanting that Starcaster. All right. I tell Santa to put that thing in my uh, stock. Plus with Christmas and red and all the... Joyous things. Yeah. 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 I still don't know. I don't think I've ever seen a red Starcaster. It probably not, but, but Santa had them. Okay. Santa, Santa has them. Yeah. Yeah. They make them in his workshop at the North Pole and yeah. stuff. And I wonder if that was a direct result of, of the, the iconic 335 being the red, red rot. Yeah. Red Cherry. Rum. Yeah. Red yeah. rum. Anyways, I'm going Starcaster 2 because I, okay. I like the headstock on a Starcaster, yeah. but more I dislike a a I guess you could say a classic sort of Strat-ish style <laughs> headstock on a hollow body. I can't do it. Don't mm. like it. Nope. Mm. Personally, not nope. no can do. Don't don't dig it. Um, the the Starcaster just has this a cool a cool mojo to it. I like that subtly offset. I like the headstock. The headstock is much cooler. Much cooler headstock. And I'm with you guys on the on the wide range. I love wide range pickups. I wish more guitars had wide range pickups. Uh, so I guess that's unanimous. Is that a first unanimous? I think that might be the first unanimous. Mm, it might be. Yeah, yeah. It could be. So Santa, if you're if you're listening. Yeah. Bring it home. Bring home, bring it home three. Baby. Starcasters. Starcasters. Don't worry and about red. the Coronados, man. Yes, Don't sir. make those. Yeah, bad. the Coronados, just keep those up there at the North yeah. Pole. Yeah. Hey, uh, everybody, we'd like to remind you that uh, Reverb.com is a marketplace just for musicians all over the world. You can buy, sell, make offers, and negotiate with complete protection. Whether you're selling from home or if music gear is your day job, there are millions of listings online already, and it's free to list yours, too. Join the Musicians Marketplace at Reverb.com. Hey, everybody. We'd also like to thank our executive producers for their support of our podcast, and we welcome Mason Green. Yes. Uh, we also welcome Sean S., Thank you, Sean. Yep. And then we've got Oliver Gonzalez, Oliver. John Daly, Robin Smith, Derek Fitzer, Pete Marshall, M Carlos Mancha, Matt Brammer, David Wolfson, Martin Cliff, and Tom Barazin. My guy. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> hey, if you would like to become an executive producer, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs to find out how. And while you're surfing around on the internet, you can check out Jared at... Brandon Wound Pickups. Four. 
guitar pickups, man. <laughs> For custom made <laughs> guitar we pickups. We need to work on your For ad copy. Four and 20 years ago. <laughs> and you can find Tony at pickguardian.com. Also on various social media outlets yep. using the nom moniker Pick Guardian and the number one. Yep. So if you've got a wild design, wild idea for your pick guard, he's the guy to call. Tony I've and I it. work together on a lot of things too. So um, feel free to contact us both. Yep. All right, everybody. I think that's pretty much. Subscribe! Yeah. yeah. Troy Van Leeuwen. Van Leeuwen. This time for sure. Van Leeuwen. I don't even know what you said, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> they should. <laughs> okay. Todd is having a meltdown. <laughs> okay, I gotta get through this. Okay, I gotta. we gotta keep it to the pedal. We're the one drinking. Gotta keep it Come to on, the pedal. <laughs> well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs visit our website at the guitar knobs.com for all of our past episodes four on the floor blog and other good stuff you can connect with us on social too at our facebook page and share your gear and stories on our facebook group also be sure to check out our instagram at guitar knobs catch you next time